Hey guys, Agro Ninja here, and I'm back with some more Enoch Matica 8. Unfortunately, there's going to be a bit of a time jump. We're about to take a tour and look at a whole bunch of things that I've built that you're going to be like, wait, why was this not in the episode? Well, the reason being is because I had some issues editing what was going to be the next episode in this series. All of my footage wasn't usable. I've had to scrap it. We're going to take a tour and look at everything that I did end up completing and go ahead and move forward. So let's go ahead and get that started now. Also want to take a moment to note that I've had issues with my voice the past couple of days and a cough has developed. So if I sound a little off, that's why I do apologize for that. But let's go ahead and get this tour started. The first thing we're going to take a look at is I have made some diamond armor and I have crafted a new pick with silky instead of redstone. So I'm able to silk touch things in the world like ice. And I've also made this steel sword, which is pretty decent. It's got a diamond upgrade. It has knockback and it has sharp on it. And it does almost 10 damage and its attack speed is 1.64. So it's a decent little sword. The next thing we'll take a look at is you'll see I've added some additional farms. I've spread the wheat a little further and I've also added this massive farming area here with some pathing around the edge. I plan to do one more of these over here on this next level up and bring the wheat all the way around the river edge all the way around to somewhere in here and then just kind of naturally build into the, the landscape and that's pretty much all for the exterior of the base that we're going to do here in this location. Uh, we're pretty much going to work on the interiors and building new rooms uh, in the buildings we already have established. You'll see I also cleaned up the immersive engineering wiring. It looks a little better now. I turned these posts around so it's more leveled out. And I've got it coming in the side of the building here instead of through the roof of that hole. If we take a quick peek up here, you can see how it's coming in and still connecting. You'll also notice there's some wires running over there. That's something we set up in the previous episode, or I should say what was going to be the previous episode. So let's go take a look in there. In here, you'll see we've set up this metal press, which is from Immersive Engineering. What we do is we put ingots in here and they, they get fed out through this extracting conveyor belt and get fed into the metal press. And then you have a, a plate on it. And right now there's the plate one. I think we can pull that off so I can show you. I'm not sure how to get it off, but there's the metal plate one. And this is um, the wire mold. And we can click these on and off, I, but we'll leave that one on there. And in the previous episode, we built this first, or I keep saying previous episode, what was going to be the previous episode. We built this first because we needed a whole bunch of plates for what we were going to build next. And just to demo this thing real quick, we'll throw some, some copper ingots in there so you can see it go at work here. you can see that it's making uh, more plate. And if we swap it out, throw the copper back in there, and I'll just let this run. But now it's making wire meshes. Oh, and there's this little dropping conveyor belt that puts it in this barrel under here. So pretty useful. You get double the amount of wire using this versus the, the little hand tool. And you don't get any more on the plates, but at least you don't have to make the hammer and burn through the hammer. So this is has no durability and this is also where the power is was is running that i was talking about and if we just take a quick peek up here you can see i've got it running around and again i know i've got all these extra relays but i, I like my stuff to line up and this lines up about best i could get it so this is how we have it set up and if we head back to the front of the starter village There's nothing on the inside here. Well, there might be a few things. Let's take a quick peek. I did make an, this engineer blueprint to make the, the press mold. And I made this armor stand, put our old iron armor on it. 
I think that's about it in here. But out front, you'll notice I have installed a new staircase. I got tired of jumping into the water and having to go to the ends, get on the second floor. Oh, you'll notice there's a door here. Well, I built this in what was going to be the next episode. And it's a new little room here. It's a pretty good size. It's the biggest room we've built. We're going to have additional rooms come off this until we get ready to work, start working on what will become our mega base, which will be in the future. And I've used this polished salt, very similar to upstairs, but slightly different flooring and everything else, you know, as you've seen before how I build. And you'll notice I've put in something here. What is this you say? Well, these are thermal electric generators with one blue ice and one uranium block for two sides and each one there's 17 of these is generating 21 fe per two sides so each one is actually generating 42 fe which adds up to 714 fe per tick which is pretty decent early game power generation it's significantly more than our water wheels which are probably barely hitting 100 and if you take a look over here, you'll see we built an advanced energy cube and a metallurgic infuser, which we use to make some parts for this. So let's just take a quick look at our JEI at some of the stuff we made. So this is the metal metallurgic infuser, which is a couple iron furnaces, iron ingot, and an osmium ingot. Not much to it. And with this, we can make the parts that we needed for our cube, which we'll go look at. Well, the first thing we made was this basic energy cube, which doesn't use any of those parts needed, but it does require these, the steel casing, which is pretty simple, steel, more osmium. And it also requires a inner, two energy tablets, which is just gold. Oh, it does require, it did require these infused alloy, which is what we needed the metallurgic infuser for which is simple iron, redstone, and of course it needs power to operate. Once we had that, we went ahead and upgraded it to the advanced energy cube, which takes the basic energy cube as a base, two more tablets, and some infused alloy. So this was very simple to get to, and now we can store 6.4 million FE, which is pretty good to get started with our main project we're gonna work on today. And I've added this little access panel so I can get behind here. This is not permanent location. I just have it sitting here for right now. And you'll see we use the basic universal cable, which is pretty simple to make. We'll take a look at that real quick. It's just steel and redstone and you get eight. So and we've got it running over to these thermoelectric generators, which you, you can see the bottom here. I've got a little maintenance area that I can work on this if need be. Um, but if we take a look at those, you'll see why I wanted that metal press. So we made 17 of these. So for each one, we needed five Constantin plates, which is one nickel and one copper. So we made a whole bunch of these plates, a bunch of steel, and these copper coil blocks, which are some LV wire coils, which we already know how to make surrounding an iron and like i said we made 17 of these and what was going to be the next episode and then we then we set all this up on camera and we tested the power and we questioned my math of course most of my math was wrong but the one part that was correct spot on is the 714 fe per tick that is spot on <laughs> but that's about all we major things that we done there was some other things that was included that wasn't really progress related uh, that we won't go over. We did go, there is one more thing I want to show you. We did go on a dungeon run, me and my friend Misfit, and we cleared a dungeon. The dungeon was really screwed up, which I was going to have to apologize for anyways. It was kind of pre-lit up by, by these crystal nodes, so there wasn't really any hard mobs at the bottom. Uh, but this is all the loot that I got from that dungeon run. So unfortunately, we don't have the footage for that, but here's what we got. We got a bunch of gems and some more TNT. No diamonds, but I did get a diamond helmet with Unbreaking 2. A bunch of iron ingots. 
but I do plan to do one more of those. It's not something we've done before, but I think at this point, so we've got our new gear. I'm going to grab some more food and clean out my inventory, but I think we're going to meet up with my other friend and we're going to go on a quick nether run because I need a bunch of nether quartz and I have none. I had to borrow nether quartz. We won't tell him that I borrowed those because I don't plan on putting them back. But <laughs> I had to borrow nether quartz for the shark on my sword. But let's go ahead and go meet up with my buddy. All right, my main objective is nether quartz. So wherever you think we can get some nether quartz. Oh. And avoiding those lit up dudes. Oh, here's some right here. Is this a blazing quartz ore? What's the difference? What is this? Uh, it gives you blazing quartz, which can be used instead of coal. I don't know which one of my picks to use. But okay, that's not, the one. Uh, you don't want to see a blaze spawner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, I'm coming. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I up my bad. I forget you can't jump with those again. Yep. My first nether adventure was very quick, and I got what I needed and left. So, I'm a little bit better geared now. Oh, you see my sword I made? Oh, what is that? A dog. Oh, neat. I haven't been over here for a little bit, so... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, right do you have the portal mark, by it's the right way? Because I it's don't, right and I got lost last no. time. I, I know how to get there from here. I've been here a few times. Yeah, okay. don't break into that. That's where my... The, oh, okay. It. Yeah, <laughs> see, you just come in here. <laughs> there. I put the blocks back. That's nice to know. I will definitely come and use that to get some blaze rods. I haven't had a strong need for them yet, so. But I really need yeah. some nether quartz, so. Oh, here's you some wither skeletons over here. Cannot believe I fell in lava again. Did you die? I no, I didn't die, but I'm I'm toasty right now. <laughs> I can make more arrows and then I'll be ready. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> wow, two spawned that time. I mean, I even have my shaders turned hey, on right now, go. so lava is yeah, super don't bright. Go right here, there's lava. Yeah, there's I lava see right that. Here. Careful. Bro, careful. Lava. Well, that was a blast. I really enjoyed that nether venture since we got to go with our friends on that one. Let's take a quick look and see what we were able to bring back with us. We was able to get some magna blocks. I don't have a need for them at the moment, but you never know. So I grabbed some, we got some more netherrack. We got some of this blue netherrack. We got some nether quartz, which is what we primarily needed. I was even able to find some dimensional shards and we don't have any of these. So that was, that was a very good find. We also got that diamond chest plate armor. And of course, a single blaze rod, and we found some cobalt as well. I wasn't able to find any ardite, that would have been nice, but maybe on the next trip. We also found this blazing quartz. I'm not sure what this is used for, but we'll definitely take a look and see what we can do with it. I also just realized that when we were doing the tour, we didn't go over the quest book at all. So let's take a look at the quest book and what we were able to accomplish in what was going to be the next episode, which was primarily building out machines and setting things up so we we will shift over to immersive engineering and you can see we unlock the thermoelectric generator which is just one of those and you get a uranium block and some blue ice which is what we use for the cool side i don't know if i went over that previously and of course the metal press which and this is the components that you need to make that which is two conveyor belts a redstone engineering block heavy engineering block 
steel scaffolding, and a piston. And you put all those together, just like you do the blast furnace and the coke oven. You right click it with the immersive engineering hammer and it forms into what you see in the world. In mechanism, we also got a few things knocked out. We got our metallurgic infuser, our alloy, and of course our advanced energy cell from the basic energy cell. And what I wanna move into now is refined storage. And that's why we needed the nether quartz because if you take a look, almost all of these components use some type of silicone, which is made from nether quartz. So this should be enough nether quartz to get us started. So that's what I want to start getting ready for now. Okay, I think I got everything we need to get this next sequence started. I will be the first to admit, I am no refined storage expert. I've actually barely played with it. I personally prefer applied energistic, but since it's in the quest book, we're gonna tackle it and at least do enough to finish the quest part of it out. And we're gonna use it as our main storage system in the starter area. But I have big plans for our mega base that I'm already putting to paper and that is going to include a massive, fully automated, applied energy system. I feel AE2 is more powerful than refined storage. At least it was the last time I've played with refined storage. But we're going to use it here since it's in the quest book. So let's go ahead and get started on that. My initial thinking is we'll put it in this wall right here. So I'm going to do this on camera. So we'll see how this goes. And we'll just, we're going to put it right here. Is there a center? on this wall one two three four five six seven yeah so it should be the center should be right here so like i said i'm not fully 
familiar with refined storage, but we'll figure it out. And I think we can just run this over behind our little wall here and connect into our power and bring it around. It's right here. Oh, let's go all the way to there. Yes. I think we just knocked our quartz off. That's no big deal. We can put it right there. So, uh, we figure out how we're going to do the power. I think the best thing will be to, to connect it right here and bring it up. That way it is not blocking our walkway. And now we have our... I just keep running into more and more roadblocks. So now we have this thing. So we'll move it over one more. And we'll put it right here. All right, and I'll clean this all up later. I am a bit OCD, so I have to be careful playing Minecraft. Everything ends up perfectly lined up and squared, and I really try to fight that. <laughs> it is definitely a balancing act for me. So let's clear this out. I can't walk through there. Knock this off. We're going to just run the power down through here. And where did, where did I say the middle was at? I think it's down a little bit further there, right there. But we are going to attempt to put our controller here. And I don't know if these need a power acceptor like AE2 does. It does not appear it does. It just goes right there into it. And then the grid should go right here. So now it's powered. And then we have our disk drives and we have two 4K storage disks, which you, you should have seen me craft all this. It was not too bad. It wasn't too bad. And for now, we'll just put this, I think it needs to be touching this via a cable or directly to it. But for right now, we're just going to put it right here. Like I said, I'll, ooh, why is that dark? Um, hmm. Is it just a shadow because of the, the wall, the block? I think it's just because of the wall. But we'll figure that out later. We may have to use something else in this wall so it doesn't look like that. And we can put these two 4K drives in there and provide a storage. So we have 8K total storage. And now we should be able to look, put an item in here. Ha! Ah. And now we have a significantly superior storage to chess, which is just awesome. And we could connect different things to this, this system. Uh, but this is what we're going to do at the moment is, is coming our quest book and knock out these quests. So we have the processors themselves. So there's some quartz and wrist iron. We got the controller. We got the grid. And we've got disk and disk drives, which is our is our basic setup for refined storage. This other stuff we're not going to get into in this episode. Well, there is one other thing I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to do a crafting grid, which looks like it is another grid combined with a crafting table and advanced processor. You sh you saw me make these other two. I'm going to go ahead and and craft this and add this and maybe the fluid one since it's a sequence and I'll probably do that off camera and add these in here and clean it all up but I wanted to show you guys roughly where we were going to put it how we were powering it and how we are um, attaching the disk drive and the disk and I just realized I made a big boo -boo. and I'm gonna have to move things around because I just attached this to the main power line not in our cube so my thought process is is we'll use the energy cube as a power gate so we won't we don't want nothing pulling from this directly we want all of the power to come into the cube and power going out of the cube to power our machines so there's something always in between our machines and our power generation at least that's how i like to do it so i'll have to fix that as well but for now i think there's one more thing i want to take a look at this episode so let's go ahead and head that direction so what I would like to do now is set up a mechanism for pulling out crystal out of our Coke ovens a little bit more efficiently. Because right now, I don't even think I can run both of them and get a full stack of Coke because it fills up that tank before it finishes, which is completely inefficient and I'm tired of having to deal with that. So what I want to set up is a Mercive Engineering tank. 
is this the best option? No. But aesthetically, I think it'll fit the base really well. I think it'll look good. So we're going to put one of these together. Uh, and I did not mean to put that there. We will need that, but not yet. We're going to use these iron sheet metals. And I did look at how to set this up. And I believe this is the right way. So we will find out. And I need to go upwards. Let's see, I got some blocks here. So we've got oh, two sections that are hollow. And I believe it said this holds 512 buckets. So, I mean, that's significantly more than our 32 buckets we're holding now. So, oops. Need that because I don't have any to spare. All right. Now we should be able to jump down, pull this off. And I believe I have my hammer. Now let's right click it. Now we have a tank so we can pump our fluid from our coke ovens into this. So I don't know if I have enough fluid pot, but we're going to try. And I want to take a look at the top and see, because I'd like to input it at the top. Yeah, you can, I'm pretty sure this will work. We're going to go there, go there. I think we're going to take it down the, just right down through here, like that, and connect it. Um, I'm not sure where those coke ovens are at. Let's go look. I mean, I know where they're at, but I don't know where I want to pop my hole at. Maybe right here. Well, let's pick these up. We need a few more fluid pots. I have two iron plates, we need four more. Be four right there. This thing is so cool. <laughs> I love these multi block structures like this. It just adds a lot of depth to the game. So we're gonna make eight more of those. That should be enough to finish this up. And do we want to pop it out the top or let's let's pop it out midways here do I have my hammer I think we can yeah I don't want it to touch all these pods it looks bad there we go and then let's connect it up good fit boom and now it should be filling up yeah see there you can see Chris oh let me do that now it's uh, going in. So that should hold a lot more than the 32 buckets that we were doing. I don't know the exact math on that, but 512 is a lot more than 32. <laughs> and we can uh, set up a mechanism for pulling it out and putting it into a tank when we need to actually use some to make treated wood. But right now we have tons of treated wood. So now they're running again. And I'm gonna just put this in here for now. And it looks like it's uh, storming, so we may sleep. But let's go back over and take a look at our refined storage setup because I have that cleaned up and want to show you guys how I have it set up. Okay, so you can see I moved things around a little bit here. I didn't get around to making the additional pieces for this. We'll probably do that in between episodes, and I'll show it to you guys in the next one. I did move the metallurgic infuser over here, and I moved the disk drive to this location. It's still dark. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's probably the resource pack. I don't have shaders turned on right now because of the issues with rendering, so it's not that. And I did rearrange the power. I, if you guys have played Enigmatica 8 and you know something that will hide a mechanism cable, let me know. I spent about five, 10 minutes looking through JEI and trying a few different facades and covers and couldn't get anything to attach. So I had to leave it open like this and just put a block behind it. But I rearranged the power cable and now you have an input coming in the bottom and an output out the side. So there's a there's a gate in between my power usage and my power generation. And I have it just running around and cleaned it up a little bit like I said I would. And it's connected here and into the metal metallurgic diffuser. And <laughs> what I was doing this, trying to decide how I want to do it, I accidentally vein mined this entire run. And even though the, the cables aren't connected here, I guess because they're touching the energy cube, I pulled out almost two stacks of universal cable I had to replace it all not fun but you know mistakes were made but i think for today we're going to go ahead and wrap it up 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'm sure by now, though, you've realized I've double oopsied. Only that last segment had any game audio. I was really upset. Already dealing with the previous issues that I've already made you aware of. Instead of trying to fix it again, though, we're just going to push through. I will do the best I can to edit this out. And then I'm going to take some time to kind of reflect on everything and try to prepare and test all of my systems so there isn't issues like this in the future, or at least try to limit them. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends so we can grow the channel. This is Agro Ninja, and that's a wrap.